New York court yesterday and spent most of his time attacking the attorney general and the judge overseeing the trial itself. After asking Trump's lawyer to control his client, Judge Arthur Ngoran gave up and let Trump rant, rant before ignoring the comments and moving on. The civil fraud case is challenging the Trump family's actions in regard to devaluing the Trump Tower complex. After best-selling author Leah Johnson got tired of dealing with people and organizations wanting to ban her books, she decided to open her own bookstore in Indianapolis. Johnson's first novel was named one of the 100 best young adult books of all time by Time Magazine. In 2021, she also won an honorary Stonewall Book Award for young adult novels that reflect the LGBTQ experience. For those of you who commute to campus from Kansas City, the delays on K-10 are nothing new. Just today, another crash between Kill Creek Road and South Cedar Creek Parkway delayed traffic in both directions. Construction on bridges in western Johnson County has also slowed traffic down to one lane in each direction, which is amplified during rush hour and sporting events in Lawrence. The Kansas City Chiefs and many of their fans were in Germany this weekend, but it's a good thing they weren't in Hamburg. Multiple flights were disrupted after a hostage situation involving a custody dispute took place at a major airport. The situation ended peacefully 18 hours after a man drove through a security barrier and parked underneath a plane with his four-year-old daughter in the car. For more in sports, here are Charlie and Jacob. Thanks, Emma. The men's basketball team kicked off the regular season last night in Allen Fieldhouse with an impressive 99-56 victory over North Carolina Central. The game was part of the McClendon Classic, which honors the Afro-Indonesian roots of John McClendon, a KU graduate who coached at four HBCU schools before finishing his career at Cleveland State. Kevin McCullough scored 22 points, 100 Dickinson added 21, including three of three three-pointers. But maybe the most impressive stat of the night was the 34 assists. At halftime, KU had scored 21 baskets on 22 assists, meaning that after the first miss of the game, every basket had an assist which is most often a measure of great team play. The women's team gets underway tomorrow night with a 6.30 p.m. tip-off against Northwestern State. The Jayhawks return four of five starters and are coming off a WNIT championship from last season. Coach Snyder said the team was hoping that the attendance would be bigger thanks to the WNIT victory. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the players are all excited to see, um, you know, what kind of fan turnout we'll have. Uh, I do know season ticket sales at last check, we're up about 94%, so hopefully we'll have a, a, a good atmosphere. KU is picked to finish third in the Big 12 Conference this year. The football team held off Iowa State on Saturday night in Ames for a 28-21 victory. The biggest play of the game came from midway through the fourth quarter, just after the Cyclones had scored to cut the lead to three. On the first play from scrimmage, Jason Bean hit Lawrence Arnold for an 80-yard touchdown, which gave all the momentum back to the Jayhawks. KU is now 7-2 on the season and guaranteed a winning record for the first time since 2008. More importantly, the Jayhawks are 4-2 in the Big 12 Conference and are leading a five-way tie for third place behind Texas and Oklahoma State. Next up on the schedule is a home date with Texas Tech. The Red Raiders will visit the booth on Saturday with kickoff scheduled for 11 a.m. The volleyball team swept Kansas State this weekend to win the Dillon Sunflower Showdown. Junior Caroline Bean stepped in for injured Reagan Cooper and led the Jayhawks with 14 kills and two service aces. K was now 18-4 overall and 9-3 in the Big 12. The Jayhawks will take a six-match win streak up to Ames this week to take on Iowa State on Friday and Saturday. And finally, former Jayhawk Sharon Lokiti took the bronze medal at the New York City Marathon yesterday. The defending champion placed third this year, just 10 seconds behind fellow Kenyan Helen Obiri. Lokiti's time of 2 hours, 27 minutes, and 33 seconds was 4 minutes slower than the race she won in 2022. That's it for sports. After the break, Davis will be here back for the weather. Welcome back, KU. As we can see right now, it's a beautiful sunset once again. I was here yesterday and I complimented that sunset. We got more pretty colors going on, but we do have some clouds up there on our little TV screen we got right there. 
Current temperatures right now to 64 degrees with cloudy skies. It feels like 62 degrees, but our dew point is at 59 with the humidity at 57%. So that being said, it feels kind of cold outside. I was walking outside trying to get here earlier and it was pretty chilly out. The almanac for today, it's the high was 70 today and the low was 37. So we're still way above our average temperatures for this time of year, but we're not quite at our records, which our record for today is at 82 degrees. So we were about 12 degrees away from our high record and quite a lot of went away. We were about 31 degrees away from our low record. Uh, I'm very glad that we're at neither 80, a high of 82 or a low near six. Current temperatures right now in Lawrence, it is 64 degrees in Leavenworth. It is 62. Kansas City is 64, Topeka and Ottawa are at 65 and 66. And if you see right now, there is nothing going on, but I'm back at the temperatures now, so we're gonna head up to our dew points. Lawrence dew point is at 59 with Topeka at 56, Leavenworth 61, same with Kansas City, and we're back to another good morning KU. That's not the segment that we're on right now, but we're back at our dew points. You know, remember our satellite imagery, we had some clouds going up earlier uh, down in the Lawrence area, but those wished away and now, Going on later in the week, it's gonna, we're going to start to see some more sunshine. And then and towards the weekend, we're going to have sunny skies, and that is going to lead on into early next week. Forecast for tonight, 50 degrees. I'm back. Look at that. Uh, 50 degrees for tonight, clear and cool skies, humidity of 56%, cloud cover 10%. We got northern winds coming in at 11 miles an hour, so that's pretty comfortable outside. You are going to feel it, though, so put on a coat, put on a jacket. Going in deeper... 59, 54, 51, and 47. Our temperatures are around the same there. They gradually start to go down throughout the night, so we're not going to see a huge shift in temperatures. But our wind gusts are still the same. It's going to be quite a breezy night, and that really sets you up for tomorrow morning. Class planner for tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. It is 42 degrees. That's a temperature we haven't seen in a while. The humidity is going to be high, but when you have a high humidity with a low temperature like that, you're not going to feel the stickiness and the mugginess of that. But as we keep going on throughout the day, by 4 p.m. we're at 58 degrees. We've got northwestern winds of 4 miles an hour. So you're not going to really feel that wind throughout the, all of tomorrow, basically. But those clouds are coming through. It's mostly cloudy skies pretty much all day tomorrow. For our extended forecast, so as I said, Thursday, it's going to be partly cloudy. But then take a look at that on the TV. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, sunshine. we got sunshine. We have partial clouds coming in on some days. But Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, those are going to be our warm days. So 67 degrees, 68 degrees, and 69 degrees. Those will be a little bit humid, especially on our Wednesday with that cloud coverage coming through. So it will be, feel a little bit uncomfortable. But for your game forecast, uh, it is going to be quite nice on Veterans Day. It's also going to be quite nice. But then as we get into those later aspects of our early next week, we'll be able to experience more, maybe put on a pair of shorts. And as we can see right there, it's going to be pretty comfortable. And that's all the time we have for Good Evening KU tonight. Thank you for bearing with me throughout this TV. Uh, my name is Davis Clark. Thank you very much.